All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this question on solving differential equations. So I've worded this very specifically because you're expected to, you know, recognize this wording and know what to do. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation dy over dx equals 20 times y minus 50 with initial condition y of 0 equals 200. So when you're asked to find a particular solution to a differential equation, you know, you should know the steps to take. And, you know, one thing, we'll kind of note this at the end, but when it says y equals f of x, meaning your final answer should be y equals something in terms of x. So, the first step you need to take is separating the variables. So, we're going to take our differential equation right here, dy over dx. And when I say separate the variables, what I mean is, you get the y's with the dy's, and you get the x's with the dx's. Now, in this case, there's no x, but we can still get the dx on the other side, you know, get it away from the y's and the dy's. So what I'm going to do, i notice right here y minus 50. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to divide that by both sides to bring it over to the left, okay? So um, I will have 1 over y minus 50 on the left-hand side. Um, and I guess I'll do this in two steps, so then dy over dx equals 20. So again, I divided y minus 50 from both sides to cancel it out on this side and bring it over to the left. I want to get the dx on the other side here, so I have you know the y's and dy's on one side, all the x's and dx's on the other, even though there's no x's, still the dx you want on the other side. So when I multiply by dx, I'll be left with 1 over y minus 50 dy is equal to 20 dx. Okay. Now, that right there is the step called separating the variables, okay? And if this were a free response AP question, then you'd get one point just for doing that, which seems kind of simple, but at the same time, if you do not do that correctly, you will get zero points for the whole problem, and usually worth five to six points. So, again, separating the variables is a very, very important step. Once you separate the variables, then you're going to want to take the antiderivative of both sides, okay? So the antiderivative over here of 1 over y minus 50 would be um, natural log absolute value y minus 50. And the reason why that is the antiderivative is because the derivative of the bottom is just equal to 1, which is the top. So when the derivative of the bottom equals the top, um, you can use your natural log rule. On the right-hand side, the antiderivative of 20 is just 20x plus c. Okay, got to make sure I put my plus c in at that step. Okay. Now, sometimes, you know, I have people ask, well, why didn't I put a plus C on this side right here? Well, you could have, and, you know, I'm going to do this real quick, digress for a second. I could have put a plus C on this side, but then what I could have done, let's say I called this one C1 and this one C2. Okay, and I'm running small um, with this C because I'm just going to end up erasing it in just a second. But then what I could have done is I could just subtracted this to the other side and combine those together as one constant. So that's why I didn't need to, um, to do that. All right. Um, at this point, now, in a free response question, just to kind of guide you with scoring here, you would get one to two points for the antiderivatives, probably one point in this case, they're not super difficult. So one point for correctly finding the antiderivatives, and one point just for putting plus c, okay? And again, pretty easy, you're like, wow, for putting plus c I get a point? Yes, but if you don't put plus c at that step, you will not get any more points for the rest of the problem. So again, it's very important to do so. And it's important to do it in this step. Don't start trying to solve for y, and then a couple of steps later, just put a plus c in there. You've changed, you know, kind of the values of things. So you have to do it at that step. All right. Now, our initial condition, 0, 200, is what's going to help us find c. Um, and in many problems, you can just plug it in at this point, and maybe this one would work out even too, and you can find it c, and it works fine. But I find that when you have a natural log and you have to raise both sides to e, I find that I'd rather just use my initial condition at the end because when you raise both sides to E, you, you know, eliminate those absolute values and your value of C can take on the positive or negative what it needs to be. And so sometimes what happens is you end up getting an opposite value for C in the end. So again, if I have a natural log, what I'll do is, my, my next thing I'll do is I'll solve for Y. And so I need to get rid of this natural log, so I'll make both sides exponents of E. So E and LN are going to kind of cancel each other out and just leave me with Y minus 50. And, you know, I'm dropping those absolute value signs right there because you'll see in a second this value of C is going to take on, you know, the positive or value, negative, whatever it needs to be. 
Now on the right hand side, I'm going to use some exponent rules to rewrite this, okay? And what I'm going to do is I, I use this exponent rule, x to the a um, times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. So that's a common exponent rule. And what I have is I have this e to the 20 plus 20x plus c is in this format right here, where the x is like the e, the 20x is the a, and the c is the b. So I'm going to take this and go back into this format and write it as e to the 20x times e to the c. Okay, e to the 20x times e to the c. So again, I just kind of took it from this format and going back to this one. Let me just erase this so it doesn't get mixed up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice, okay, e to the c. Well, e is just a constant. It's a number, 2 point whatever, 7 something or whatever. c is some constant, so when I have a number raised to a number, it's just another number. Okay? And I'm a lot of times pretty lazy and I just write, replace it with c. But I probably technically should say, okay, well, e to the c, let's call that c1. So it's just a new constant called c1. And so I have y minus 50 is equal to, and instead of writing e to the c, I'm going to write c1, but I'll usually just write that in front. So just switch these. Okay. All right, so I'm very close to solving for y. I'll go ahead and add 50 to both sides. And now I've solved for y equals 50 plus c1 e to the 20x. All right, so um, now what I need to do is I need to use my initial condition. So I'm going to plug 0 in for x, and I'm going to plug 200 in for y. Okay, 0 in for x and 200 in for y. So when I do that, I get uh, 200 is equal to 50 plus c1 e to the 0. And e to the 0 is just 1. Okay, so just for the space, I'm going to have to erase that right there. Um, and so that's just 1, so that I can just rewrite this as 200 equals 50 plus c1. So when I subtract the 50, I get 150 is equal to c1. So I'll take that and plug it back in for c1 into this equation right here to get y is equal to 50 plus 150 times e to the 20x. So <clears throat> the final points right there would come from uh, using my initial condition. So at this step right here, I would have got a point for using my initial condition, and then my final answer point, having it solved for y and having everything correct. So again, the point breakdown, plus one for separating the variables, okay, plus one or sometimes two for the antiderivatives, getting correct, plus one for putting plus c, plus one for using my initial condition, and another plus one for my final answer point. So I solved the differential equation, which I think in prior videos have mentioned that basically that means here's the derivative. Solving the differential equation just means finding the original function.